What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now today I have something extremely exciting prepared for us and it's something I plan to do for a little while now. But before we even get started, the transport vehicle, the Rubicon 392 is dead again. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump it off, pull it out, that way we can get everything hooked up to get ready to go. So I believe I've got a parasitic draw on the Rubicon 392 of some sort. I thought it was from the JL Taser at first. I ended up rebooting the entire program, everything like that. And I really still don't know what the issue is, but it happens a little less frequently than it was originally, but it's still an issue nonetheless. Each time it actually dies, the theme changes on the inside. So before I had it set to blue, and then it died completely, and then it changed to orange, and now it's back to blue again. So I'm not sure if that tells you anything, but I don't really know what's going on. And now since that's finally over, we have to see if the machine we're actually testing out today is gonna start. So this is the machine we're actually testing out today. If you guys have watched some of my previous videos, you already know what's going on with this bike. I picked it up from Whistling Diesel, I guess a couple months ago now. It's got some knobby tires, it's got a crash cage, a few extra accessories to make it a little bit better off-road. So today we're gonna test those modifications out and see if this thing can really go off-road. Now that we've got all this hooked up, last step is literally just to grab some of the extra equipment and we'll be good to go. Something crazy I wanted to show you guys too, since I did jump this thing back off, I have lost probably half of my apps on the Uconnect screen, and now the back screen is actually Uconnect instead of the scat pack emblem like I had before. So there's all kinds of weird stuff going on with this thing. Pretty strange. Well, we have made it. So I'm gonna go over here and try to find a spot to park. Oh yeah, it looks like a few people are actually here. That'll be good in case it breaks. So it does seem at least like there are a few people out here today. But we made it without any hiccups, which was nice for a change. But we'll go ahead and unload this thing, get everything set up, and we'll hit the trail, see how it really does. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea which trails we should be on, so should be fun.
So guys, I'm not even gonna lie to you. We're only about 20 minutes into the ride here and it's already got pretty freaking difficult. As you can probably tell around me, it's just a lot of really good off-road trails for a Jeep. So right now it's extremely muddy. A lot of this stuff is still frozen too. And if it's not frozen, it's just now getting a little bit mushy. So this thing is sliding around absolutely everywhere. We're gonna go up a few of these other trails. There'll be a few more obstacles and we'll probably lay it over here in a minute.
but the Yamaha is actually doing pretty good for what it is. The bike is so darn heavy that whenever you do get in a situation that you need to turn around, it is horrible. It's awesome having this much power on the trail, but in all honesty, I haven't got above third gear, so I mean, I, I don't really know how much power you really need on these trails. Now, there are a lot of places with these massive rocks, and I've tried to avoid them the best I can, but inevitably, there have been a few places that I've needed to go up, and for that situation, the crash cage has done really well, the belly pan, the exhaust cover, everything like that. All of the protection on the bike has already been put to use in this, you know, maybe an hour and a half worth of riding, which is pretty impressive. So I can say it's set up pretty well for off-roading. It's just still a little bit too heavy because whenever you need to turn around, it's horrible. It is awesome out here. The Colmont Park is awesome. It's been a really great place and I'm excited to take the Jeep up here riding now as well. Looks like there's some awesome trails. There's a bunch of different difficulty levels too, so that's always fun. guys can see it all right there absolutely amazing so we are all back made it back to the trailer and i've got to say i'm pretty impressed with how it handled itself a lot of the more difficult trails it was a little bit too rough for it weighed too much to turn around. The traction wasn't as great as a normal dirt bike and the weight did throw it off a little bit on some of the tight trails. Once you get it out in some of the more open trails that are more just dirt and gravel, it is an absolute blast. I haven't had that much power on a bike off-road in, I don't think ever. I mean, it's just awesome to have that much power on tap and you do actually get to use a quite a bit more of that power whenever you're on the right roads for it. So this is what it looks like now. It does throw the mud, that's for sure. Everything on it is pretty much covered and the cage did its job really well. Of course, it collected quite a bit of mud as well. I rubbed it a few times, but nothing too awful bad. 
The radiator here, I did wipe it off once already, but it covers up pretty quick, especially with that knobby tire throwing all that stuff. And you, and you guys can see just how much this grabs. These tires grab a lot of stuff and it throws it right into that radiator. So I was worried about some of the cooling issues, but didn't run into anything like that. Same thing with the brakes. I was worried about with the brakes getting all that mud and stuff on it that maybe it wouldn't grip as well. But the brakes seemed to do fine. Of course, we weren't going 100 miles an hour, so it wasn't as big of a deal as what I thought it would be. But overall, the bike performed extremely well and I'm pretty happy with it. And I gotta show you guys something so crazy. I just started the Jeep back up and everything went back to normal, which is really weird. Not the way I originally had it set, but how it was last, which was orange and all the apps came back as well. Earlier, I even turned on my off-road plus and I couldn't even use my front trail cam. It was almost like it was in a base sport mode, which I didn't really understand. But now everything seems to be working. The voltage on the battery is reading right around 14.1. So it's working well now. I'm just not exactly sure what was going on with it. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for today, guys. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you wanna see next. If you do wanna see this thing in the future, drop it down in the comments below. If not, I'm thinking about going ahead and selling this and getting something pretty awesome I know most of you will like. So let me know if you wanna see more content on the bike. Maybe I'll keep it, but if you don't, let me know that as well so I can go ahead and get rid of it. Until next time, Godspeed.